Hi, my name is Mandy. I am known as Mandy Von Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. I am a crocheter and a knitter and a machine knitter. I love to knit sweaters and cardigans and garments more than anything. And I thought it would be pretty cool if I rounded up some of my sweaters and cardigans that I've made in the last couple of years and talked about the patterns and talked about the yarn that I used and some of the issues that I had with the patterns and just showed what they look like on um, a person. I, um, a little bit about me is I am 38 years old. I live in southeastern Michigan. I am incompletely paralyzed, so I won't be standing to show you how the sweaters look, but hopefully you can get a good idea just from me sitting here. Um, let's start with the first one that I'm wearing. And this is probably my favorite sweater in the whole wide world. This is the Fantastic sweater by Stephen West. I fell in love with this pattern when I saw it browsing through Ravelry. Everybody loves Stephen West patterns and everybody loves his shawls and um, I have an issue wearing shawls. I sense they'll drag. They will definitely drag when I'm in a wheelchair if I'm not careful. And I wanted to get in on the Stephen West knitting the fun of the make along the mystery knit alongs the make alongs and everything like that so when i ran across this i was really excited when you look at the ravelry pattern picture it has a whole bunch of different colors different contrasts it's just a lot whenever i decided i wanted to make this sweater i just kept thinking okay i want to make it in a blue to dark blue gradient and you can tell that that's these are the colors that I picked. Um, I got the yarn from Blackbird Sycamore Yarn. Uh, it is a merino nylon. The original sweater is knit in DK weight. This is fingering. Um, I believe I knit two sizes up from what I would normally wear. And I love the fit on this. If you take a look at the, um, the armholes, it's pretty deep. You are more than um, able to adjust it as you go, but I love this. This is probably my favorite part of the whole sweater. Um, it's just so comfy and so squishy, and it's, it's like wearing a hug. The stitch patterns were not hard, and they kept changing throughout the pattern to make it keep it interesting you know sometimes you get miles and miles of mindless stack and that and that's great if that's what you want to do but sometimes you like to change it up a little bit um if i had to do this again i would definitely still stick with like a a lighter color to the same color darker it's sort of an ombre that i have going on here I'd probably pick pink because that's my one. Well, that's pretty much the color that I love, but I had to do blue for this one. I made it for, it was a birthday. I don't want to say that it was a birthday sweater. It was more of like a birthday cast cast on, you know, I had really wanted to do this for some time and I just, everything came together and I cast it on. It took me about a month, possibly. It didn't seem like it was a very long process. I, once I got going, once I split for the sleeves, it really came together. I. Since I was using, I believe, four colors, I would um, knit the sleeves in tandem. So I would go do this section of the sleeve on this side, and then I would go do this section on this side. One thing that I do for sweaters, or well, maybe not cardigans, but one thing that I try to do when I do knit sweaters is I will do the sleeves first and then I will go back and finish the body. 
something that bothers me about sweater knitting is when you're turning and turning and turning for the sleeves and you've got the huge body like it's just it's complicated and I I, I like easy simple um, I would definitely knit this again I would love to see everybody else knit it too it doesn't have that many projects Look at this. Do you guys know what this one is? Any guesses? I'm sure you recognize it. This is the Lace and Fade Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. I will put transitions in between each of the sweater clips so that you know the yarn that I used, the weight that it called for, and the pattern name and who designed it. But um, I have just finished this. This was my... Um, second to last knit. Well, actually it was my last knit for myself. I crocheted a cardigan after this, but um, this is the Lace and Fade Boxy and I love it. It's so comfy. It feels like I'm wearing pajamas. <laughs> the yarn that I used is black, once again Blackbird Sycamore yarn. Um, I loved these colors and you can tell, let's see, let me see if I can get this bottom part right up here. You can see it goes from, it fades. It's, um, I, at first, because, okay, I am 4'8". We're going to say 4'8 on a good day. Um, I like to say that I'm 4'11", but whenever I go to the doctors, you know, they're like, yeah, no. Okay, so I am 4'8", and I was absolutely certain that I could never wear this. I am wearing this, in case you couldn't tell. I do love it. It is, I think it's really pretty. And my favorite part about this sweater are the sleeves. Do you see how the sleeves are like nice and tight? Whereas you have all this extra fabric and then these sleeves are perfect. I don't have to worry about getting them in anything. They're the, they're the perfect length. See, I love bracelet length sleeves. I um, had a great time knitting the sweater. The lace is easy. If you have never done lace before and you'd like to make this, don't let the fact that there's lace in here bother you. You will be able to go through it no problem. I cast on the sweater when I was in the hospital the last time. I've had um, many health issues this last eight years, and I've had a lot of health issues the last year. So I cast it on in the hospital the last time that I was there, and I was not thinking, no. I was not thinking at all. I've done Hohi Locatelli patterns before, and she cast on the sweater, uh, the shoulders a certain way, and then eventually you join and carry on with the garment. Well, whenever I cast this on, I cast on the front and I knit it down. I actually knit past the first lace thing, the lace panel, not thing, sorry. And then I cast on the second part, right? So I have these two sweater pieces. There's the front and the back. And then, just then, now I had been out of the hospital maybe two days after I started thinking, well, how do these join together? This doesn't make any sense. So I looked at the pattern, which you know, I probably <laughs> should have done like before. And then I realized I was supposed to join them in the round, you know, way up here. So long story short, I ripped back quite a bit, you know, to the, the join. Um, you actually knit the first part and then when you cast on the back, you pick up the stitches along here and then knit back. And I missed that entire part. 
I, I must have just glazed over it. You know, when you're in the hospital, people, are, doctors are coming in, nurses are coming in, everybody is coming in, everybody wants to take your blood, everybody wants to take your vitals, and it's pretty constant. And I mean, I appreciate the hospital and doctors and nurses are like awesome, but it's hard and it's probably not a good place to knit, but sometimes you know you need distractions. Um, I would knit this again, but I think I would love to knit just a regular fingering weight boxy. Not the worsted because I run super hot. So the worsted would probably not get worn as much. I know it sounds weird. I'm in Michigan and here I am saying that, you know, worsted weight, even sometimes DK weight is too heavy for me. Over the last couple of years, I've just started running hotter and hotter and hotter. So um, I have plans on making a fingering weight boxy probably in teal aquamarine one of these colors I just they make my heart so happy when I see them so I'm like oh I need a sweater in it how's it gonna look on me oh I don't care it doesn't matter I just I just want it This is the Granny Go Round cardigan. I knit this in fingering weight. The original pattern was knit in DK. It used several different colors and it striped them. This cardigan is constructed with the granny stitch and I thought that that would pair very well with the, the yarn that I'm us I used here. It's Hearing Color Dye Works. The colorway was Frozen Night. It was released during Christmas and I saw it and immediately fell in love with it. I am a huge fan with how this cardigan turned out. I had to, I took the pattern, read through it, and then cast on a much larger number of stitches and kind of took the gist of the pattern while being able to modify it to use fingering weight. So it was a little tricky. I had to take it out a couple of times. I um, cast on more for the front panel so that they close like this because I didn't want buttons. I'm not a big button person. I prefer zippers. Buttons just seem to come undone. I loved making this. It only took me maybe a week, a week, a week and a half. It I lined it with a black sock yarn that I got from Hobie. It was one of their merino nylons. I believe it was rainbow sock four ply. I love how this sleeve length is. It's just, it, you'll notice another trend here. I tend to make my sleeves pretty much here. Otherwise, I find that I don't grab it as much. I'm always pushing my sleeves back and it's a huge complicated thing. So. so naturally I try to make what I'm making the way I like to wear it. I would definitely do this pattern again. I think I would try to make it in DK, possibly, and just see how that goes. Usually DK weight is too heavy for me. Uh, not even so much temperature, although it is. It's the weight of the actual garment. It seems like ever since four or five years ago, I've gotten weaker and um, just having a heavy garment makes it uncomfortable. Let, let's go with that. I really enjoyed the process of making it and if you crochet, you know that the granny stitch is pretty easy and mindless. And the yarn didn't, it, there was no pooling, no pooling to, be, well, uh, there's not big areas of pooling, so I think it turned out awesome. I'm so excited about this one. It makes me happy to wear with jeans or leggings or basically anything.
Guess what? It's time for something that I machine knit. This is the Bright Axis T. It is in um, a book by Stephanie Lotman, and I love the book. It's my favorite book. I will put the book in the transition screen so that you know which one I'm talking about because I can't remember it right now. I had a lot of fun making this, this tea. I took her instructions and took my knitting machine and basically re-engineered it to where it would work and fit well and I didn't have any issues. I was able to do the short rows. I love the colors up here. It's probably my favorite um, cell striping yarn. I had a lot of fun doing this, although I will tell you this. People say machine knitting is easy. I mean, yeah, it's easy. It, it You do get what you're working on fast, but if you, you know, accidentally cast off the whole thing or drop a stitch or do anything within the realm of the finicky things that it doesn't like, you will be sad and angry and upset. So while this took, you know, a day and a half, no, okay, it took a weekend to make, there was a lot more time and effort than that. I am a newbie machine knitter. I have a Silver Reed SK, Two eighty. I can't remember the numbers right now. It works with fingering weight yarn. I love to do it. I have a ribber as well. I make the garments that have a lot of stockinette that I really want in them. I've been looking at Tin Can Knits, um, their Bonnie pattern. It is a really, really cute shell. It has a ton of stockinette knitting in very thin weight yarn. So I'm hoping that I can make something similar to that on the Silver Reed, but I'm not sure with the lace how that's going to go. I will probably just knit up until the lace and then cast it off and hand knit the rest of it. Um, other than that, I really love how this top came out. The sleeves are short sleeves, so it's perfect for winter or summer. I don't know what I'm thinking. This, ignore this, this is, um, I'm on IV antibiotics right now, so this is my pick line, and it's basically a soccer on my arm, so it's not part of the sweater, don't worry. This one is knit with Barocco Vintage. It is super soft and comfy. And remember how I said I wasn't a big fan of DK weight? This is probably the only thing in my wardrobe currently that doesn't fall into that category, even though it's DK weight. The yarn is super smooth. Um, this is always there by Hohi Locatelli. It has ribbing strips up and down the front. It is squishy and boxy and I love how the sleeves are are not um, oversized. They, they That's another trend I think as I'm saying it out loud. I really love fitted sleeves with more boxy room in them. When I saw this cardigan I knew that I really 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 wanted it but because it's in DK weight, I sat around thinking about, well, okay, what am I going to use to make it? I looked back and forth, you know, going online, seeing what options there were, and I ran across the yarn. This is wool and acrylic, I am pretty sure. I will correct myself if I'm wrong. And, you know, I really don't get the feeling of acrylic in it. It's super soft. I could pretty much wear it all the time. 
in the winter. But it's the perfect thing to throw on, especially when I'm going to uh, a doctor's appointment. I have a lot of those. Or just outside, maybe um, in my wheelchair, we'll all go for a walk as a family. But I would recommend this. I should probably knit this again. I really like the style of it, but I think I might go for a lighter weight and make the sleeves just a tiny bit tighter. Sort of like the boxy, the lace and fade boxy, make them to where there's not as much fabric. I that shouldn't that that's an easy an easy modification for anybody that's ever worked on a sweater. There's a bunch of negative, well, not negative. There's a bunch. <laughs> there's a bunch of positive ease in the um the cardigan, and I put these little cute black buttons in the front. Don't look too closely because I'm not very good at sewing. It works though. I'm pretty proud of this one. I've made this in the last year. Actually, I made this during the Hohi Locatelli makeathon where people go ahead. Do you see my cat? She's trying to jump up here. I made this during the Hohi Locatelli um, makeathon where I knit two sweaters and two cardigans. This was one of the cardigans. The other one was Make-A-Wish. Um, I also knit... Easter West. Sorry, I had to think about it for a second. I knit Easter West and another pullover I can't think of. Oh, the Timeless Henley. If you've never seen Easter West or the Timeless Henley, I really suggest you go check them out, especially if you like Henleys. Um, the Timeless Henley is great. It, is, it has lace detail right here. And it's a Henley with fitted sleeves. It's, uh, it's awesome. I, would, I, I definitely would knit all of Hoagie's patterns that I've made again. It seems like she does a lot of she pays a great deal of attention to the um, shoulder construction and how it's made and how it fits and I really appreciate that. For Always There, I, whenever you cast on for, whenever you join for the underarms, I cast on some extra stitches just to make sure that I would have room. I, on some of um, the garments that I've made previously, it kind of, I, I don't like the tight feeling there. I really like it open. This is the only color work sweater I'm going to be showing you. This is the Outcrop by Rachel Ilsley. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. If not, I'm sorry. I will link it down below so that you can find the pattern. The, um, I made the neck a little bit too loose and this is what I should really do is snip and then pick it up tighter and kind of knit it up a little bit but I'm not going to do that because it doesn't bother me that bad. This sweater took a lot of work. I'm not the best at color work and you can see how sometimes it bunches, but I'm willing to excuse that and accept it as it is. I'm planning on knitting more patterns from the designer. She has so many amazing color work sweaters and I have like, I mean, I'm sure I'm like all of you. I have like 37 patterns in my queue of things that I want to knit. And like, I'm a monogamous knitter, so it's going to be a while. But I enjoyed my yarn choice. This was um, super soft and it is knitting with very thin yarn that feels kind of weird until you wash it. It's because it has the spinning oil on it and rest assured that once you rinse it off and block it, it will come together great. 
The issue with that is you really need to swatch for this one. I did not swatch for this one. <sighs> but you should. You definitely should. See, uh, I, I accept I don't swatch often, and then I am willing to accept, you know, that sometimes necks turn out like this. And you know what? That's okay. I think it's part of the learning process. I really wish I had enough patience, I guess, to do more color work in smaller projects. I think that that would probably make the bigger projects a lot better. But here, let me see if I can show the sleeves. You'll notice that this is not as baggy, this is fitted. You can definitely modify it the way that you want though. This is what I was going for for this one. I think my gauge was off, but I'll never really know, will I? This, um, the Super Soft is wool that you can buy on a cone, which is awesome. You can also, it, for machine knitting, you can use it as well. Sorry, the camera cut off. As I was saying, the one issue with on a cone, cone is that, you know, it's harder to, in order to wash the yarn before you use it, you need to hank it up and then wash it, and that's a lot of work. And... I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just like to craft. There's not that much time in the day. I wish there was. My husband keeps saying he's pulling for like a four day work week. I agree with him. We'll see if that ever happens in our lifetime. I, I wouldn't knit this particular pattern again, uh, but not for any reason other than, I mean, there are, she has a million patterns and they're all awesome. So if I'm going to spend a bunch of time and knit another color work sweater, I'm going to pick a different one in different colors. I have white and blue and that's definitely what I'm trending for for the next color work. It is Holst Garn on a cone. It is the one that has silk in it and I cannot remember what it's called. But yeah, this... This was a winter project. I had originally cast this on ages ago. Just got the collar and then put it away for like ever. Brought it back out and just decided, okay, we're just gonna muscle through this because it's, it's, it's a lot of work to do color work, especially on an entire sweater. If it was just yoke, it'd be different, but you're going all the way down the sleeves and working color work in sleeves is an adventure an adventure we'll go with that i i had it, i thought it was an adv i thought it was fun but at the same token i kept thinking hey i have a muscle bro that i can just be mindlessly knitting on and that's so much easier the sleeves for this one took me quite a while but i'm i'm proud of it i'm glad that i decided hey i'm going to tackle this and get it done and now I have a sweater out of it. The Super Soft is not Merino Soft. It's above, it's not anywhere near as soft as Merino. It is a little bit itchy, but I guess it depends on your tolerance. It doesn't bother me all that much, but I keep a, a shirt on underneath it. I would recommend if you've never felt Super Soft, <laughs> Super Soft, that's an ironic name, isn't it? I recommend that if you've ever, if you've never felt super soft before, just grab like a ball and try it out. It's a great yarn and it works amazing in color work. It's everything they said it would be, really. If you look at um, how the stitches filled right out, when I was knitting this before it was blocked, you could see through this sweater. As soon as it blocked, look, nothing. It's like magic. Okay, you're allowed to laugh for this one. I've laughed a ton. 
It's the way that it goes when you ignore Gage and just do your own thing. This is crocheted. It is the Amelie sweater. I found it on Hobie's website. The sweater is beautiful. The problem with my sweater is that, do you see this? This is like, I, I could fit through my, I could fit my whole body through this neckline. And I can fix it. I know that I can. It's not a big deal to fix it, but you know what? I think it marks the occasion. This is just something I'll wear around the house. It's super comfy. I made it with Hobie um, rainbow sack yarn. It doesn't... I mean, as I... <laughs> it's not something that's going to bother me when I'm lounging around the house. Kind of like one of those sweaters you throw on and you're just watching a movie. The pattern was great, and you know, you work this sideways, which I thought is amazing because, you know, it was interesting construction. It did not take me that long to make, even though, it, you know, it is, it is a larger garment. For me, it's over, it's a little oversized. Yeah, the neck is just, here, here look, I'll just like, we'll just pretend, get some pins. No, I never do that, but but I'm going to try to make this again. I really want to use white as well again, and this time I'll pay more attention, especially to the neck, and even the arm, look at, see this? Because the arms are crocheted sideways, you ca cast on, you chain as many stitches as the pattern says, and you don't really know how long it's going to be until you put it together because we've got this nice drop shoulder here. So the drop shoulder for me starts just like my elbow is here, the drop shoulder is right here. So I mean that makes sense, but like I said, when you're doing it sideways, so now I have like this, ah, so I have to keep doing this. It was a fun experience though. I've noticed in the last couple of years that crochet patterns for clothing have like exploded. I, I keep seeing so many crochet patterns of garments that I just want to knit and I want, or I want to crochet and I want to crochet all of them. Whenever I had first started crocheting like 12 years ago, I looked at the garments and they were okay, but nothing like now. I. Instagrams popping up with like all sorts of crochet items and it's great. It makes me really happy for crochet. It's showing people that, you know what, crochet, crochet can make some kick butt garments. Uh, obviously you have to gauge first, but y y you understand what I mean. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to remake this one day. In fact, you know what? This pattern is so easy to modify. You could make it any, like any width with just a little bit of imagination. I could probably even make one for my daughter. I think she would want pink though. I don't blame her, I like pink too. But definitely not white, she's eight. This is the Recalibrate by Shana Line Designs and I love it. Have you ever saw yarn and thought, oh my gosh, I know exactly what that should be? That's what I felt like when I opened this. This was a Beehive Yarns um, Halloween box and I'm just like, wow, these colors look so pretty together. Do you know what would make, what they'd go really great in? The Recalibrate. If you aren't familiar with this top, this pattern, you should definitely check it out. It is all knit, all knit. The construction is amazing. Um, just check it out, trust me. I, um, 
I didn't even modify this one, I don't believe, not at all. I followed the instructions exactly. It did not take me long to make. It's short sleeves, which I like. My bind off might be a little bit tight right there, but you know, that's my problem. <laughs> Usually when I bind off on a sweater, I will do, I will bind off in pattern, but Every other stitch, I will do a yarn over and um, bring it over that the stitch that I'm binding off, and it gives it a little bit more stretch. I should look into other bind off methods, but it just hasn't reached out to me as a need yet. So, anyway, this advent was 12 days and one main skein. This was the main, and then obviously these were the um, the 12 days. I am so happy with these colors that I ordered her next advent, Halloween advent. Sorry, I had to think about what I was saying for a second. I ordered her next Halloween advent and I can't wait to see it. This, even the length on this, it came out really well. You know, uh, you start to wonder, especially when you go sideways with a garment, if everything's going to work out the way it should, but the way that she designed this, it does. And you can modify it. I could have made longer arms if I had wanted, but I only have two or three, around three, somewhere within the area of three short sleeved shirts. Um, so that's why I kept them the way I did. I will definitely make this again, probably with my next advent from Beehive Yarns. Other than, otherwise, maybe I'll just, you could even do this in like one color. It would be amazing. And it's so squishy and the fabric is just awesome. I love it. Do you remember how I said I love Stephen West sweaters? Well, this is another one of them. This is the Painting Bricks. I This is one of those patterns where you could do all sorts of crazy colors, whatever your heart desires. For me, I had, want, I had this idea in my head, right? That instead of the bricks being different colors, I was going to make the outer part. So I don't know if you can tell, but up here it starts with light gray, light, and then it starts fading. It gets darker, and it's amazing. The yarn was a kit from LMK Designs, and it's super squishy, and look. Okay, if you've never knit Stephen West before, I believe, and I, I might be mistaken, that he was the one who brought it to my attention that you could fold that, you could basically have a double band right here, a double ribbing. You knit four inches and then fold it and it's so squishy, look. Ah. This is something I would wear in the winter. It's kind of hot. It's not because of the yarn, it's just thicker because Oh, hey, the origi this original sweater was knit in DK. This is sock. This is sock yarn. So it's another example of me taking a pattern that I really love and re not reconfiguring it. For this one, it was super easy. Stephen West's patterns are great. I basically just knit, I think, an extra, extra large, possibly. And it came out fitting fine. This yoke is a lot um, smaller than, than the Fantastic, but I, I love it. Look. Ah, I was so proud when I finished this. And then the hot pink, but with the gray to like mellow it out a little bit. I really, I don't know. You know what? I keep hoping that Stephen West is going to come out with like a hundred more sweater patterns. I know that um, there are a couple of shawls that, of his that I really like, like the 
slip stravaganza I keep thinking oh man I really want that but I can't use shawls because of the wheel I mean okay okay disclaimer I can use shawls I just don't want to run them over and I feel very awkward wearing them when I'm sitting in the wheelchair and you know it I do use them as blankets though I have a couple of shawls earmarked as to basically make them into super large blankets which for a Stephen West pattern isn't a big deal because a lot of his shawls are huge anyways I'm only 48 so it doesn't take a lot um, to keep me warm but I'm hoping to see more of uh, sweater patterns from him in the future. I just ordered um, best knits too, which I, I think that, that the reason I'm sounding like that is because I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. I will mention it down below if I'm wrong. But best knits too, it's sweaters and it was a signed copy and it's coming tomorrow so I really geeked out about that. But I don't know if I'd make this one again. And it's not because of the pattern. It's another one of those, well, I only need one of them, right? For a sweater like this, you only need one because it's not more of a, like a, you know, a staple, a wardrobe staple. This is not nondescript. How about that? I would love to make more of his patterns. I have in the queue upcoming in probably a couple of weeks the Pierre pullover I'm going to make it in a yellow gradient so we're gonna see how that looks I don't know if yellow will look good or not but you know what I'm willing to try and if not I have a son who would love it Okay, I have one more sweater to show you, and this one is not mine, so I can't wear it. This is Sunspot. It is by Elena Nodell, and as you can see, it's really, really cute. I love the pink fade. This was knit in Karen Colorama Halo. This was knit in a bulky yarn, and as you can tell, from looking at the lace it's less delicate than the pa the picture the pattern pictures but I've knit her this three times now and she loves it I went to Joann's and I said hey look at this colorama halo it looks amazing it is the perfect fate I believe they call it perfect phase phasing so the colors change into each other as you can tell from looking at it. See? She was really excited about this and she asked me this morning, she goes, Mom, when am I going to be able to wear my cardigan? I've been waiting forever. I cast this on last week, like last weekend. It's Sunday now, so I cast it on like last Saturday. She's, she's okay. So for pattern modifications, the pattern is knit in fingering weight. This is bulky and I made a balloon sleeve here, but since it's short, it's harder to tell unless it's on her. It has, the yarn has a really, really pretty halo. I don't know if you can see that, but it does not feel acrylic-y, like, okay, Let's just face it, some yarn does have the weird acrylic feeling. This is not one of them. There are lots of yarns that don't have it, but some yarns do. Not this one. This actually reminds me of knitting with like a merino and a mohair. Because it's just so soft and the best part about this is that it's going to an eight-year-old and she can roll around in the mud dig up worms, just get all goobery, and then I can take it and maybe throw it in the washer, 
I mean, I know that you can, but because it's the, the fur is there, I'm wondering if maybe that might mat. So worst comes to worst, I can hand wash it anyways. And she's going to be super excited now that I'm done talking about it so she can take it away. <laughs> Hi, if you made it all the way through, congratulations. That was only a couple of the sweaters that I have. I've got a lot. Like I said, I spend most of my time knitting sweaters or garments for other people. Sometimes they turn out great and sometimes, uh, you know, <laughs> you just wish you had done many different things like swatch. But um, knitting and crocheting and machine knitting, it's all an adventure. And you know, if, if I wasn't having fun doing it, I wouldn't. My hope with this YouTube channel and with this video is to help make friends who are knitters and I know, or crocheters or machine knitters or crafters in general, everybody, friends with everybody. <laughs> but. I know that sounds kind of corny and weird, but I do have mobility issues. I do have health issues. I was diagnosed earlier this year with septic arthritis and I've spent the last six months um, on and off of IV antibiotics. This is coming off on the 29th, theoretically, and then I'm probably going to have to stand oral antibiotics for, in the doctor's words, one to two years. So I guess we'll see how it goes. I, like I said, I don't have many outlets, many ways to get to know people, many ways to meet people. I, I'm not going to be able to join in class, per, in class, in person knitting or crocheting or any class like that. It's just too much right now. We have an eight year old and a 12 year old and they have all of their school stuff and I don't drive right now because my legs I don't drive right now because I'm not comfortable doing it and I haven't gotten any adaptive I haven't we haven't done anything adaptive to the car so I can control it with my hands because I'm stubborn and I keep hoping that you know the last eight years I've slowly gotten weaker I'm hoping that one day I'm going to start getting stronger um, the doctors have no clue what exactly happened to me. The best they can tell me is that I have adhesive arachnoiditis. You can look it up if you want. I, I wouldn't. It's super depressing. But I went to a neurosurgeon in May who had said that I needed to get a myeliogram for him to check out some cysts that are in my spinal cord. He's hoping that once I get the myeliogram, he can see how he can help my spinal cord have more room is the basic gist of it. But the problem with the myeliogram is that it involves a needle and injecting into your spinal cord, which is, I mean, no big deal. I, I've been through enough, it's no big deal. But the thing is, an infection. The radiologist will not do the myeliogram until I'm off of IV antibiotics and cleared by infectious disease. So I have been waiting eight years plus since May, however many months that is, to get this test. And I just can't wait, especially since I've been um, to many, 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 many doctors who have just said, hey, we don't know what's going on with you. I had cancer when I was 10. It was a spinal cord tumor. And in order to operate, they basically dug out the tumor from my nerves. I wasn't supposed to walk and I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be graphic. I wasn't supposed to walk and I did. And I did for a very long time until eight years ago. So most actors when they see me say, hey, 
you can't walk now because of your cancer 20 some years ago and that never felt right to me so I kept pushing and I'm hoping that August 7th which is my scheduled myelogram as long as this is gone I will have some more answers I would appreciate it if anybody liked or left a comment or hey found me on social media I love to talk knitting and crafting and pretty much everything I am thankful for you that you decided to watch my video and I hope you have a great day bye